All women who choose to become pregnant should receive appropriate care and support before, during, and after pregnancy. With this type of care, women living with human immunodeficiency virus, HIV, can have healthy pregnancies and healthy babies. There are many knowledgeable and compassionate people working in Saskatchewan who are willing and able to provide this support. HIV is the virus that causes AIDS. Um, it's spread through unprotected sexual intercourse as well as through contaminated blood, for example, or blood contaminated needles. It also can be spread from uh, mom to baby through uh, delivery or through breastfeeding. Saskatchewan has the highest incident rates of HIV uh, in Canada. Uh, we also have high rates of uh, HIV infected uh, women of childbearing age and uh, we have uh, lots of HIV pregnancies uh, throughout the province. HIV uh, is a treatable disease and so although there's no cure right now available we do have treatments available that can put the virus to sleep and that can um, significantly reduce the risk of transmission uh, to partners or to babies as well as allow for people who are infected with HIV to have life expectancies uh, near that of someone who doesn't have HIV. Um, but it does involve taking medications every day. It also means that people need to get tested for HIV uh, as frequently as they can so that it can be detected early enough that treatment can be successful. My name is Roxanne. I'm 42 years old. I'm a First Nation single mom, um, HIV positive. Um, I have been since 1997. I'm not really sure how I got it. There's a number of ways I could have got it. I really don't want to um, speculate and I don't want to point fingers. I'm not I got the disease in Africa. I, I do not use drugs. I got the disease in 2006 from my girlfriend. She died shortly afterwards. I got tested and found that I was HIV positive. My mom had always, had always step by step kind of filled in the fact that I had HIV. So starting back to when I was in about grade one, she, she would tell me that I had special blood. When I was maybe 13, 14, she kind of told me, okay, Quinn, you have HIV. Some of the challenges I've had growing up living with HIV, um, honestly, they've been kind of normal kid challenges, but with, with a little add-ons. HIV is a normal sickness. I am presently very healthy. As long as I take my medicine regularly and on time, I can live as if I do not have HIV. If you have your health now and you just continue to look after yourself, you can live to be 65, 7 years old, you know. You just got to look after yourself and take your meds. See your doctor. The impact of medications on the treatment of HIV has changed significantly in the last number of years. It has really changed how we look at the disease from a terminal disease into a chronic disease. Although women living with HIV may need some specialized care during pregnancy, healthy pregnancies and healthy babies are possible. Without any intervention, the risk of transmission of HIV from mom to baby is around 20 to 25 percent. A lot of that really depends on mom's viral load uh, most importantly at the time of delivery. Through the use of very effective medications that are safe in pregnancy, uh, that risk of transmission um, is less than 2%. Um, so it's important that moms are able to get into care and access care to uh, reduce the risk of transmission um, to a very small number. Medications are extremely important in a woman who's pregnant. They are part of what helps us reduce the risk of transmission to that baby. And it allows us to really have babies born HIV free. The impact of the medications to the baby, we do know that they're safe for baby, has been around for a long time. There is limited effects and we would only use medications that are considered safe in pregnancy.
HIV in itself has very little impact on the pregnancy. Women who have HIV go on to have very normal, very healthy pregnancies and deliveries. Pregnancy itself has little impact on the course of HIV and does not make the disease progress more quickly. Medications are required in pregnancy for women who have HIV, and these medications are often very well tolerated. These medications can impact how fast the baby grows, and some babies will be a little bit smaller than we would expect them to be. For that reason, we follow people carefully with ultrasound and, and make sure that the babies seem to be growing well and doing well on the inside. It is important for women living with HIV who wish to become pregnant to access care and to discuss their options with their care team. It's really important if you are a woman infected with HIV and you are thinking about getting pregnant that you really talk to your care team. The options of the medications can be discussed. If you're not on treatment, we can look at putting you on treatment before you even get pregnant so that it's easier, it's more stable, you know what to expect from the medications. If you are on treatment and it may not be something that we think is the best for baby, then we can switch to something else before you even get there. So it's really important to include your treatment team if you're contemplating pregnancy. There are fertility options if your partner is HIV negative and you're worried about transmission during unprotected sex. There are um, mechanisms out there to get pregnant and not put your partner at risk for your acquiring HIV. For women living with HIV who wish to become pregnant, it's important that they themselves are as healthy as they can be. And that includes things that are important for all of us, like a healthy diet and exercise, and to take folic acid, to stop smoking if they do smoke, if they are using any other substances to, to manage that. Some women do need to go on to a methadone program if they are having substance abuse issues and that again is something that can be very safe in pregnancy and can help people to do better with the pregnancy. For people with HIV, it's important that they have their disease under good control, if possible prior. I knew um, probably within days of conceiving him that he was there. I knew I had choices to make and it had to be quick because I only had nine months to do it, eh? At first I was happy and then scared. I wasn't sure if I could carry a baby to term because I was still using at the time. Um, and then I decided that I was gonna try. I started seeing um, infectious diseases specialist and I got an OBGYN. I guess it's just surrounding yourself with the right people. The advice I would give a woman who finds out she's pregnant, who also has HIV, would be access care early. The earlier you find out, the, the better outcomes we do have. At the beginning of the pregnancy, we decide with them what their needs are and through that we um, work as a team in order to provide what they need. Engaging women in care is important. Saskatchewan has a number of organizations to assist women living with HIV who are pregnant or wish to become pregnant. I would like to encourage the woman to keep engaged in care. That is important. The team that is created to help the patient through their treatment is really going to help support them in many ways. So not just with the medication management, but also support through side effects, how to put those things into perspective, and just support on the day-to-day -day things. For anyone watching who may be pregnant and HIV positive, the first step is reach out. There's people there that will support you and walk with you through this journey of pregnancy. Um, if, you know, get you to the proper appointments for treatment, those types of things, just, you just have to make a call. There's some really great people um, in this province who do some really great work. We know that if women can get engaged in care very early, if they can get on medicines very early in their pregnancy, um, when it's recommended by the physicians, then the chances of them delivering a healthy, baby without HIV is, is really, really high. Find someone who's a support. 
It could be a nurse, a nurse practitioner, a family doctor. If they're already hooked into a, an infectious diseases type of clinic that provides care to that woman, um, making sure those conversations happen really early and that the woman is understanding sort of what are the next steps. Many women with HIV are very scared of pregnancy and much of that is because they don't have a lot of knowledge about what to expect. It's best if they see their care provider so that they can engage in care early in the pregnancy that can help them to achieve some goals with their HIV such as a low viral load which is important in helping to prevent transmission of HIV to the baby. It's also important that if they're diagnosed with HIV, if they have any other issues ongoing, that those be addressed as well, whether they be medical issues or substance abuse issues. I was well taken care of. Mind you, the work laid with me, I had to quit the, the dope and, um, you know, try to live a good life. For women living with HIV who wish to become pregnant, it's important that they themselves are as healthy as they can be. The hospital really took care of me in the sense that um, I wasn't reminded that I was HIV positive. To them, I was just a pregnant woman. When we put supports in place, those supports also include harm reduction. It may mean connecting with the methadone clinic as well. I'm on the methadone. I was addicted to opiates, so I had to get on the methadone. That's a big part. In the, and I had to surround myself again with the right people. Pregnancy is a really great time for women to become clean, and having a child helps them to stay clean. It's really, really important, even for a woman that's struggling with addictions, that's, that we support her and help her to get through the pregnancy and help to find support so that she can take home her child and be with that child. For me, it's all about balancing my mental, physical, emotional health, you know, and the four quadrants of my life, and I have to keep balance. All pregnant women should have health care appointments and blood tests during pregnancy. Pregnant women living with HIV will require extra tests and monitoring during pregnancy, labor, and delivery to help ensure the health of their babies. For women coming to labor and delivery who are living with HIV, they are assessed in the same unit as the other women would be in the same fashion. The difference that having HIV makes for them is that when they arrive on labor and delivery, a medication will be started in the IV to help prevent transmission of HIV to their child. During delivery, we often will be more cautious and take more time in rupturing the membranes just to keep the baby protected from HIV. We make sure that the mother has a, a very small amount of virus in her blood. And if this number is quite high, some women will require cesarean section. However, that's not very common. One other thing that we also are careful of is to not make any scratches on the baby's skin during the time of delivery so that the virus can't enter that way. One thing we would avoid doing is a, a fetal scalp clip. A vaginal delivery is an option, but there are a few criteria that need to be met. They need to have engaged in prenatal care and attended those visits regularly. They need to have taken their medications, and often we need them to be on more than one medication during that pregnancy. We also need them to have a viral load that is less than 1,000 and preferably non-detectable. We also need them to have an otherwise normal pregnancy in which we would consider a vaginal delivery to be an option. Baby will require some treatment after baby is born. Medications will be needed for six weeks after baby is born, and there may be the possibility of medications after that period. Mums are encouraged to be able to take their babies home with them, and there's also support that's provided following delivery for both mum and baby as they um, start their new life together. HIV can be transmitted through breastfeeding, so. Um, at present, we recommend not to breastfeed a baby uh, after delivery. That's my little miracle baby. Thank goodness, you know, he's not sick. He's a healthy six-year-old boy in school. He's bright. He's intelligent. Uh, he plays PS3. He has friends over. He has sleepovers. He's a normal boy. We live a normal life just like everybody else. The only thing is... 
I'm HIV positive, but sometimes I even forget, you know. It's not something I think about all the time because I'm not sick, so it, uh, it's not on my mind a lot. Appropriate treatment and care are essential for reducing the likelihood of mother-to-child transmission of HIV. Therefore, it is important that care providers know how to effectively engage women in care. Well, HIV is a specialized area. And so even though there's communication around different pieces, um, not everybody is comfortable or able to answer all of the questions all the time. It's a matter of building capacity. And I feel that that's what the doctors really need to do, is they need to get on a personal level with their patients and explain with them that, that you do have a serious illness, but your serious illness can be controlled. As long as they're taking their medications and as long as they're, they're doing everything they need to do, that that they're going to be healthy, they can live normal lives, they can have babies, they can have kids that are going to be 20 years old and working and having good lives. Healthcare providers in general have to do a better job than having the basic conversations. We have to do a better job of offering testing. If we want to truly prevent any risk of transmission and we want to be non-judgmental about it, then that means we not only have to offer testing early in prenatal care, but we have to offer it to all women later in their third trimester. Because the ability to intervene, the ability to prevent transmission to that infant is so huge. And no, no parent wants to knowingly do anything to harm their child. And they want to make sure that that's a healthy child. Um, so we, want, we have to install that hope too. When a woman comes in who is HIV positive and pregnant, my goal for them is their goal as well, to have a healthy baby and not to transmit that HIV to their child. In order to do that, I don't work alone. I work with a huge multidisciplinary team of um, healthcare professionals here at the clinic and um, as well within the community to do that. The biggest advice that I would have for healthcare professionals is to treat that patient like a person. They are important, so it's really listening to the patient and taking the time to tailor their treatment for them individually. I think that um, having continuity of care and building that trust um, and not having to tell their story over and over again um, helps make them comfortable and feel safe. Keeping them engaged is um, being able to really take them where they're at and walking with them and beside them, not saying you need to do this or you need to do that, providing some options, and making sure that you work with the dads as well and work together as a family unit. If you've built a strong, trusting relationship, they will continue with you. Um, if you betray their trust, you may have lost them. When we see a woman, every time we see her, we touch her because we're always touching the belly and measuring her baby and listening to her baby. And I can tell that a lot of women aren't really used to somebody touching them. And I think that once they become HIV positive, they start limiting the amount of personal contact that they have with people. And so even as a care provider, to show absolutely no hesitation about touching somebody with my bare hands and listening to their baby in the same way, for them it's very reassuring. And I think that it's, it's very humanizing for them. And sometimes this is a condition in which they haven't felt that human. If they can find that their care provider is accepting and non-judgmental, they're much more likely to engage in care than somebody who feels that their care provider isn't non-judgmental. Sometimes when we approach a client, we are inherently in a position of power. We're standing above them while they may be laying in the bed or sitting in a chair. So being able to sit next to them or sit near them and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation, making eye contact, I think is really important. Simple things, um, as simple as introducing yourself with your name. Trying to understand the barriers that have brought the person to that position that they're in or that life that they have and look at the opportunities. We keep the, the woman who's pregnant as the team leader and the rest of us who are working with her are actually the rest of her team. And so we work as a circle of care as she's going through a pregnancy, we all move with her. And at some points, she may need some supports more from outreach. So those people step up and the other group kind of steps back a little bit. 
building relationships with your outside agencies. I think it's crucial in anybody that's working with pregnant women is knowing where else they can access their services. And I think some of the women are coming to us because we built relationships in other communities. So they're coming from outside of the community and we've built those relationships. I think one of the things that we're really good at is working opportunistically. So if somebody finds out they're pregnant, they can come in right away and be seen. Because we house outreach in, in our building and you know we have access to lab, all those things can be done in a process quickly and right away and done at, at the right opportunity. Everything that they need is at one place. Stigma and discrimination are, are huge. Um, it's, I think, the largest reason, I think, that, that some women don't engage in, in the prenatal care to begin with. The reasons that people don't get tested, don't um, seek care on a regular basis, and they're back and forth between different communities. You know, trying to break down the barriers of stigma and discrimination with healthcare providers is challenging. Um, but the reality is people need to be given the chance, and it's our job, I think, to be able to support people. Providing care to a woman who's delivered a baby, even though she might be living with HIV, is really no different than any other woman who's delivered a baby. She can take a baby home with her and is the best person to, to take care of a baby. For those that struggle, often having a child to care for is a motivator for them to engage in care, often for the first time. As a care provider, that's an extremely good opportunity to make a good relationship with a woman so that once the baby is born, that relationship can continue and she can remain engaged in care. All pregnant women living with HIV and their care providers have something in common, hope. My hope for women living with HIV is that they feel that they can have children and that, that they can have healthy pregnancies and healthy children. It's important for them to know that there is care available for them and with that care they can have children that are free of HIV. They have options, stable place to live, food on the table, free formula, access to the things that they need. They can have children and those children will be safe and they'll be healthy and that they can really do all the things they did before they were infected. And that's really part of my goal as a healthcare professional, is that we normalize the disease and really allow a person to live their life as they would have before they were infected. Our expectations and our hopes are that you know, every mom delivers a healthy um, a baby uh, who doesn't have HIV. They have good healthy relationships with their health care providers, that they have open dialogue, that they feel comfortable to talk about the things that are causing them anxiety. My hope is that as health care providers that we do a better job of, of working and engaging and building trust with those women so they feel comfortable to see us before they deliver. Pregnancy should be a positive experience. Even if you have HIV, it should be a positive experience. And I think women with HIV should know that they can have healthy children who don't have HIV. HIV is something you want to own. You don't want HIV to own you. Growing up with HIV, I mean, I was a little worried about getting married and getting older and having kids, but I mean, it's definitely possible living with HIV to have healthy kids and, and have a good relationship. You can have a healthy baby and be, and be HIV positive. I'm living proof of that. You know, almost 20 years later, I'm still here and watching my kids grow and watching my grandchildren grow and life is good and it just keeps getting better. There are many people and resources available in Saskatchewan to support health care providers and pregnant women living with HIV. If you need more information about HIV in pregnancy, please visit the Saskatchewan Prevention Institute website.